Today we are starting our class in alternating current. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what is alternating current. Well, to understand alternating current, let's start with direct current because technically they're the same thing. Stay with me on this. So direct current comes from a battery or something that looks like a battery, whether it might be a DC generator. Well, we have to do a little work on that to make that work or a power supply, but we'll just assume it's a battery. And so what do we have here? We have a voltage. Let's say this is 10 volts and we can apply that to a circuit, some resistance here, and we are going to have voltage pushing current through that resistance and we're going to have current flowing in a single direction from one side of the battery to the other and the battery looks like a pump simply circulating electricity around the circuit. So what's the difference between alternating current and direct current? Well, if you freeze time, you can't tell the difference. If, uh, if this were alternating current, I cannot tell it from direct current if I freeze time. But what's different about alternating current is that it changes over time and it changes in a periodic manner, meaning that it keeps changing the same way over and over again. And most of the time when we talk about alternating current, we talk about what comes from a generator. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that, but I'll show the basic idea of a generator. Let's put a magnet here and have that pivot around. We'll have that pivot around a couple of coils of wire. Let's go ahead and put a coil of wire here and another coil of wire there, tie them together in the middle. And what's going to happen is as this magnet rotates, when the poles go by one, it's going to generate a current which is going to go out one way and in the other. So the current's generally going in that direction. But when it flips around and the opposite poles go by the magnets, it, it's going to push electricity in the opposite direction. And as the magnets go by these poles, we're going to get some kind of a peak voltage. So I'm just going to get our strongest voltage or our greatest current as the magnetic pull of the magnet is going by the wires. But as it moves away, that voltage is going to go lower and lower and lower. And eventually when that magnet is perpendicular, there's going to be no current induced in these coils, so that's going to be zero. And then as it comes around the other way, it's going to start pushing current in the other direction. That's going to be graphed as a negative polarity. So current flowing one way is positive, current flowing the other way is negative. And it's going to go down and when those line up again, we're going to get some peak voltage. It's a terrible drawing here, but I'll clean it up in a minute. And we're going to get some negative peak. It's supposed to be a K there. So there's our positive peak, there's our negative peak. And then as it goes by, it's going to drop back to zero and go back positive again. Let's go ahead and erase this and just kind of draw it a little more cleanly. So here's our zero volts, and we're going to go positive to negative to positive to negative to positive to negative. And all things being equal, that we don't introduce any impurities into the voltages, we're going to get what's called a sine wave. So this is going to follow a particular path where we can predict the voltage at any one point using a trigonomic function called the sine. I'm not going to go into that math because it's not necessary to understand what we're doing here, but that's why they call it a sine wave. And it has this uh, periodic shape that, I'm not drawing it perfectly here, but here's a picture of what a sine wave would look like on an oscilloscope. We're looking at time horizontal and voltage vertical, just like I have here on the board. And you can see this characteristic shape that we call a sine wave. And that would be if there's no impurities and that's what's generated by a generator. So we usually talk about sine waves when we're talking about alternating current, but it doesn't have to be sine waves. We can make alternating current by, let's take that battery. I'm going to draw a battery here. There we go. Positive, negative. I'm going to hook up a circuit to it. Okay, so current is now flowing that way in the circuit. Now I'm going to put that battery on a stick so I can spin it around. Let's pretend this is the battery and it goes round and round this way. I'm going to spin that around and flip it over. Now it's positive there and negative there. So what's going to happen? Now the current is going to flow in the opposite direction. Now this is not going to give us a nice sine wave because it's going to be all or nothing. It's not going to climb up and then level off and then drop back down. 
and vice versa. It's going to, well, as we, we draw that, here's our, well, I'll just draw it right here. There's our zero volts. And we're going to go to some positive voltage and then it's suddenly going to switch to some negative voltage and some positive voltage. I'm just flipping the battery over. So when it's positive up, we get that. When it's negative up, we get that. And so we get this shape that's called a square wave. We'll talk about the characteristics of that way down the road, but this uh, is not a pure waveform like the other one is. So sine wave is a pure waveform. This has impurities in it that we'll talk about another day. And really technically, if we're looking at that as that battery spins around, we're going to spend time uh, at zero volts. So uh, here's the battery positive. It's going to drop to zero as it's in the process of spinning. And then it's going to go negative and go back to zero. And so this is a really messy wave, isn't it? But it's still alternating current because the current goes one way and then the current goes the other way. Or the voltage flips polarity. We call it alternating current, but we could just as easily call it alternating voltage. So there's another way to look at what alternating current could be. But alternating current doesn't have to switch polarity. What if we have, oh, let's draw our zero line here, and I'll go back to our sine wave. What if we have this? Well, it's always positive. Let's say it's going from, oh, how about, um, how about plus 5 volts? So instead of being centered on 0 volts, it's centered on plus 5 volts. Let's say it's going to plus 9 volts and down, let's put our 0 down below there, to plus 1 volt. So it's going 9 volts, 1 volt, 9 volts, 1 volt, 9 volts, 1 volt. Is that alternating current? Yes, it is, because it's changing periodically. But it's not pure alternating current because it's mixed with direct current. Actually, this would be... We're going up 4 volts, down 4 volts. We have a total of 8 volts from this peak to that peak. So we would call that 8 volts peak to peak, total of 8 volts difference. But it's centered on 5 volts. So it's going to be plus 5 volts DC, positive 5 volts. So I'll just put that in parentheses to uh, uh, eliminate some confusion there. So we've got a mixture of AC and DC, and so it never actually goes and flows the other direction. It's just stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker, and that's still alternating current, and it has all the characteristics of alternating current, so we'll keep it that way. But it's actually a mix of alternating current and direct current. So there's the basic idea of what alternating current is. It's just a voltage or current that's periodically changing its quantity. So if we freeze time, let's look at our sine wave here again. Go back to zero. Let's say it's peaking at positive 10 volts and negative 10 volts. And let's say we freeze time right there. And let's look at our circuit here. This little circle with a little sine wave in it represents a sine wave generator of some sort. There's our resistor. And so let's say that's positive 8 volts. So at that point in time, how can I tell this from a simple 8 volt battery? And so we have 8 volts. Let's say that's 1 ohm. So what are we going to have? Huh, 8 amps at that particular moment in time. But of course, as time goes by, we unfreeze time, let a little time go by and stop it again. And now we're down to 4 volts. And now this is down to 4 amps. So it's just constantly changing. So the only real difference between AC and DC is that the AC is constantly changing. And everything that happens in an AC circuit that we see as a reaction to the AC is a reaction to the constantly changing voltage. But if we freeze time, we can't really tell that from DC. I want to take a look at alternating current just one more way, which I think will help us understand how it works. Let's take a look at our kitchen sink. So there's the sink, there's the faucet, putting water into the sink, and this is like a DC circuit. So water comes in here, goes into the sink, and then down the drain one direction. So we have our positive source and our negative uh, drain. And in fact, those are terms we'll come across when we get into solid state devices, source and drain. And the current always goes that direction. 
if this were alternating current, this would periodically reverse. Your water would come out of your drain and go back into the faucet. And I want to use that as an illustration to uh, kind of prep us for looking at the power socket in the wall. Because if we take a look at that, we have these two. This is the way it looks in America. It's going to be different in other parts of the world, but uh, the idea is the same. We just have to adapt this to what you have in your area. So there's the typical wall plug in America. I'm going to put the ground right here. This will be the neutral. That will be the hot. So basically this is your faucet and this is your drain. And so for one half of the cycle, if you plug something into here, the current is going to flow out of the hot and go in to the neutral. But the other half of the cycle, this is going to act like a vacuum instead and it's going to be sucking electricity out of the neutral and back into the hot. So this is just, uh, just another illustration. I have the flipping battery, which flips the polarity of the battery, but we can also look at it like this. So sometimes this is a high voltage, positive, pushing. Sometimes it's a negative voltage acting like a suction. And I've used this illustration before when we look at a battery. Here's a quick circuit with a battery. So there's our positive, there's our negative. This acts like a pump. It's pushing electricity out the positive and sucking it back in the negative. In our wall plug, however it looks in your country, there's the big one, the little one in America. This is going to be the positive, that's going to be the negative. Current is going to flow through our circuit in that direction, but because it's alternating current, sometimes it just simply changes and this becomes negative and becomes a suction and sucks it back in. So pushes it out, sucks it back in, pushes it back out and sucks it back in. And this is our zero volts uh, in the way we measure it. So that's just a, one more way to look at how alternating current works and we can wrap our mind around different ways for different types of circuits. So that is what alternating current is. It's simply where the polarity is periodically changing or the current is changing the direction that it flows. You can look at it both ways and we can look at it as like the battery's flipping over. Sometimes it pumps the electricity this way. Sometimes it pumps the electricity that way. Or we can look at the wall plug and say, well, sometimes it's pushing electricity out the hot and sometimes it's sucking it back into the hot. And either way, we have either a high positive voltage or a high negative voltage. Here in America, that voltage will go up as high as, well, in the, in the standard wall plug, about 170 volts. So it goes up to about plus 170 volts, pushing it out with that much voltage or down to minus about 170 volts, sucking it back in. Well, I thought it was 120. We'll talk about that a little bit down the road when we talk about how we measure alternating current. So flipping polarity, pushing in, sucking back. We can also have it where it's mixed with DC, where instead of reversing polarity, we get a higher voltage, lower voltage, higher voltage, and lower voltage. But in any case, it's periodically changing in the same way time after time. So it's always changing just as a point here in uh, North America, it changes 60 times a second with what comes out of the wall. In most of the world, it actually changes 50 times a second. But alternating current is not just what comes out of the wall. We also have a lot of other alternating current sources. If I look at this as a microphone, there is a diaphragm in there that is vibrating in response to pressure waves in the air. As it goes away from me, it pushes the electricity one way. As it comes towards me, it pushes the electricity the opposite way. And it does that at a lot of different frequencies. A uh, microphone typically responds to as low as 20 cycles per second to as high as 20,000 cycles per second. Radio is also alternating current. We have uh, circuits that generate alternating current at frequencies above 100,000 cycles per second all the way up to billions of cycles per second. And those are all alternating current. So when we talk about alternating current circuits, we'll often be just generally talking about what comes out of the wall at 50 or 60 hertz, but sometimes we'll be talking about higher frequencies such as audio frequencies or radio frequencies where things are much, much higher in frequency. But that's what alternating current is. It's just voltage that is constantly changing and in its pure form it changes in that sine wave form, but in other forms it might do square waves or other shapes too. It just depends on what the source of the alternating current is. And we'll explore in subsequent lectures about how different circuits respond to alternating current and how they respond to different frequencies. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. 
and a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.